Hey y'all, welcome back to Sam Can Do. If you don't know me, I'm a rebel creative, so that means I do all things creative, but I do them in my own way. I'm also a Glowforge enthusiast, a Glowforge maker, an original Kickstarter owner. Um, I've been avoiding doing this since I bought my Glowforge. It has been years. It is shameful. I've been avoiding cleaning my Glowforge, and today, uh, yeah, today is the day that we do it because I wanted to share with you guys a journey, and I wanted to also share a couple things that I've learned along the way. Now, of course, I don't have everything I need um, because uh, that was just great. I need little Zeiss wipes, which are supposed to, uh, I don't have Zeiss wipes, which are little like lens wipes that you're gonna use to clean different parts of the Glowforge. So I'm gonna go do that. But first, I'm gonna make a trip to Starbies because I got a gift card for Christmas. So, you know, let's go to Office Depot. Okay, these are the options I have. This seems like the same thing, but it's seventeen dollars. Good lord. Okay. Um, this is where we're going. So if you're following along, this is not the official tutorial on how to clean your Glowforge. That is going to be on the Glowforge YouTube. I will put a link down below. Anything that I do that is not on their tutorial is considered do at my own risk. I'm not suggesting that you do it. Um, just, just so you know, like if you want the real official tutorial, that's what they have. This is just my experience cleaning my very, 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 very dirty Glowforge. I'm going to show you how bad it is and I want you to not judge me because I'm a human being just like you were a human being and you know all of us have skeletons in our closets and I have a skeleton inside of my um, my Glowforge and this is what it looks like. So now that we've, uh, you know, come to terms with the fact that I'm disgusting, just kidding, I'm not disgusting. A situation does not reflect on myself and my personhood. I'm trying to grow. Just, we've realized that the Glowforge is in a bad situation as far as how dirty it is. These are the materials that I am using. Screen wipes, these are not the ones that uh, Glowforge suggested, but it is the ones I was able to find at Office Depot. Um, isopropyl alcohol, including a little spray bottle to use the isopropyl alcohol. Some, what would need to usually be microfiber cloths. I don't want to have their clean cloths that I have in my house. I also use paper towels, which are not sewn here. The electronics duster for what, you know, like you spray electronics, a contractor bag. Um, eventually one thing that's not shown here is I actually used a magic eraser again not in the original Glowforge plan of things to use um, and of course the Glowforge lens lens laser thing removey thing and um, also a vacuum cleaner because good god this thing is disgusting um, I went to town on first emptying out the Glowforge tray itself which um, was gross it like everything was covered in this like little like pilled up dust and so i went ahead and set that aside to deal with later and i went to town on just trying to first i didn't want to like use that little air blaster thing on anything before i just got all of the debris or as much debris as i could out of the actual glowforge so i just went in with paper towels and moistened cloths the way that they said and just got as much out as possible. Now one thing that I found to be very problematic is this little hinge on the Glowforge has a tendency to capture a lot of things. It's actually like bent because I've been so bad about not making sure that that stuff comes out. I had so much stuff captured in that hinge and um, it affected the way that the Glowforge closed and so a lot of times it would be like oh your Glowforge isn't closed and I had to come and press it so I think that was causing some problems. So I was able to go in there and I didn't know how to get it out. I tried to vacuum it out. So what I ended up having to do was use some little tiny tweezers that are actually my lash tweezers. Oh, here they are. Some little tiny tweezers just like this. And that's how I was able to pull out uh, a lot of the debris and items that were stuck inside. 
Um, and then after that, I just went to town on cleaning this metal front and oh my gosh, this was so bad. This is why I actually ended up pulling out a magic eraser because it was so heavily debris. And again, one thing that they tell you to do is to make sure that you don't spray anything inside of the Glowforge. Like if you use a lens cleaner or isopropyl alcohol that you spray it on a cloth. Oh my gosh, there's a bee trying to come inside. No, you're important for the world. Go live your, live your pollinator life outside, my friend. I am not here to harm you. I, oh no. Don't spray anything in the Glowforge, spray it on a cloth and then go in with the Glowforge. And so um, I found that to be very imp understandably important. Um, but I went to town on just cleaning, cleaning, cleaning every single part of that hinge, the door, and the bottom layer, which I cannot describe to you how awkward it is scrubbing the sides because it's like this kind of like scratch. Oh, it's like this kind of scratchier material, which I'm sure makes sense in like why there's a reason I'm sure, but God, I hated wiping it. But the metal part was so, so, so satisfying. After that, I went ahead and went for the scary parts, um, which were addressing the actual laser things. Um, so I started on the tube, which I will let you know that this is kind of a frustrating project because at the end of the day, there are parts that I can't reach. I've let it go too far. I didn't clean this in time. And now there's kind of some dust in places that I can't fully get to. I might be able to if I had like chopsticks and a, I don't know, I, I don't know, but I wasn't willing to like spend hours and hours and hours doing this. I only let myself spend 30 minutes on this whole project. And so I went to town going on that tube, making sure that it was at least visually pleasing as much as possible. I used q-tips with alcohol I went in and cleaned as much as possible and then I finished with the scary parts which are the actual printer head itself now I very much suggest if you're doing this to watch the video because they have really good instructions I basically um, took it flipped it upside down and cleaned the two little lenses that are on the bottom who knows what all these things do I don't know the difference between them and then I put that back then I took the belt off which is like a little clip, which I hate doing. I hate taking this part. I hate it. I feel like I'm going to break it. It scares me every single time, but it's actually pretty easy. Take that off. The whole magnet, the whole like laser head is attached by nothing but a magnet. Put, pick that up and then use a special little blue magnety thing tool to pull out that lens. And then you kind of grab it, which I guess is a special, I don't know which part is the laser. Anyway, I pull it out. I use the lens wipe to wipe it down. My lens wipes were a little bit wet. So it scared me. So I actually went in with like a microfiber cloth to like get the leftover lens wipe liquid. I really hope that it's okay. I don't know. That's not what they said to do. They said use Zeiss wipes. So I didn't have access to those. Hopefully it's okay. Then I put that back and then I didn't even know that this part existed. There's a little mirror that I like, you pull off the top where it says Glowforge logo. You just pick it up. There's like a magnet thing there. You pull it out. There's a little mirror. Again, wiped that put it right back the way they said. And then there's a special hidden mirror on the very, oh wait, there's a mirror on the side too that you wiped, same situation. And then that was kind of the laser, but there's this random mirror on the far left of the machine too that I, you reach in, you can't really see it here and you kind of wipe with your little lens wipe. Um, and then after that, I just spent a lot and long, long time trying to clean the camera that's on the top and the surrounding glass area because it was so dirty. And then I found it was one of those things. It's like, it's so dirty that now every time I clean, I can see more dirty parts. And it became this thing that almost became obsessive. And I said, I have to stop. This is enough. I have cleaned it enough. And this is my clean Glowforge. I feel really proud of myself. I feel really happy. It was not as hard as I thought it. Well, in some areas it was not as hard as I thought. In other areas, it was harder than I thought. And and um, I, you know, I also, after that, you know, after I kind of scrubbed everything down, sprayed it with the little air duster um, in different parts, but because there's still some dust I can't get to, it kind of freaked me out. I didn't want to blow more debris. Um, but for the most part, I'm really happy with the, with the way that I was able to get this clean. Um, it's a 30 minute process I avoided for years. And will I have learned anything from this uh, situation? No, I probably will leave it way too long again, but hopefully maybe not. Who knows? If I were Glowforge, I would put a thing, a reminder on your actual app, because I don't know if they clock how many hours we use our Glowforge, but it'd be super cool if I had a reminder go off that says, ping, you've used your Glowforge for 40 hours. Consider doing your cleaning process or whatever, because they suggest that in the video. 
Well, I hope this was interesting and fun for you to watch me clean out my Glowforge. Maybe it'll give you some motivation to do something that you've been avoiding. Um, I am coming out with a new series next called How to Turn Your Glowforge into Cash because that's kind of the most frequently asked question that I get when people ask me about, well, is this going to make my money back? And honestly, I can't tell you that. I can't tell you. That's like saying, is riding my bike or is buying a bicycle going to give me strong legs? I don't know. Like, are you going to ride it or do you have the ability to ride it? Do you know how to ride a bike? What kind of bike are you getting? What are you going to do with it? Do you have the time to ride your bike? You know, there's lots of different things um, that go into that, but I'm going to give you my best um, tips and tricks on how to turn your Glowforge into cash. My experience will be from not only my work with my Glowforge items, but really my experience running a social enterprise and doing product um, growing a small brand of handmade products um, into something that is going and being sold across the nation um, and I'm excited to share what I have and I'm excited hopefully for the comment section that maybe some of y'all have different ideas um, that we can help each other in because I am always trying to diversify how I'm making money and I'm really getting more serious with my Glowforge goods that I'm making so anyway thank you so much for coming to my channel my name is Sam again um, and as always if you want to save $500 on a Glowforge or um, $200 or $300 or there's different amounts you can save depending on which one you buy. I have a link down below. That money does get kicked back to me. It is supporting me, but it also gives you that savings. I appreciate everyone who's been a Glowforge support uh, buyer through my code. It has helped me a lot and I'm grateful for you watching. Uh, thank you guys so much for sticking around again and uh, yeah, have a great day. Do, 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 do. Cleaning out my Glowforge. Making lots of money, hopefully. Out motivating followers to clean their houses and stuff.